Continuing on with my 12 part rookie profile series for 2022, we keep churning through this deep wide receiver class with my wide receiver eight and 111 and one quarterback leagues and sticking in that second round of super flex leagues. We're now talking about Western Michigan wide receiver Sky Moore. And Moore is actually a phenomenal prospect that is honestly being undervalued because of how deep this receiver class is, how many receivers will probably go ahead of him in the NFL draft. And also the fact that he's not coming from a power four school as he's coming out of the Mac conference. But Moore hits on a lot of things that I want to see from my receiver prospects and combined with his current value in rookie drafts, that makes him one of my favorite players in this class. But first, let's get into Moore's college career because he started off hot in his freshman season in 2019, ending the season as the team's wide receiver one because Dwayne Eskridge broke his collarbone four weeks into the season and Moore caught 51 passes for 802 yards and three touchdowns. He was literally so close to having this be his early breakout season, but the math just really failed him on this one. It was super, super close. But this season honestly is even more impressive when you consider the fact that Moore converted to wide receiver after playing quarterback and defensive back in high school. So he had to learn the receiver position immediately in college at a power five school. So what is normally an impressive freshman year for most any wide receivers in college is that much more impressive, I think, for Sky Moore. That production held in 2020, even with Eskridge back as a fifth year senior and also with a COVID shortened season, because in five games, Moore totaled 25 receptions for 388 yards and three receiving touchdowns. But it wasn't until 2021, though, where the offense was just entirely Sky Moore. No more Dwayne Eskridge. He was Western Michigan's go-to receiver, catching 95 passes for 1,292 yards and 10 touchdowns in a breakout 41% dominator season. He was their only receiver with over 50 receptions or 800 receiving yards on the team. He had six games with over 120 receiving yards, another over 100, including two games with over 180 receiving yards. Granted, you could argue that the competition level is a little lower in the MAC conference, but he still torched number 13 overall Pittsburgh for 11 for 124 and one. And he also tied a school record against Northern Illinois with four receiving touchdowns in a game. Hey everybody, real quick, I just wanna let you guys know that we at DLF have just dropped the 2022 Dynasty Draft Guide. This is an amazing resource to help dominate your startup drafts for the remainder of 2022 that is just gonna be constantly updated as the NFL moves and changes from the remainder of the spring into the NFL draft through the rest of the summer. So this is an amazing resource that includes a whole bunch of articles on different strategies to take in your startup drafts, different things to do with your 2023 rookie picks, leverage trades, sleepers, breakouts, busts, late round targets, deep stashes, all of that stuff and more is inside of this jam-packed resource to help you guys dominate and crush your startup drafts. You can gain access to this right now if you become a DLF Premium subscriber. The link and everything will be down in the descriptions. If you become a DLF Premium subscriber, you will gain access to this amazing resource for 100% free. So go check it out, gain access, dominate your startup drafts, and let's get you right back to this amazing DLF YouTube video. So let's move on to the analytics because this is really where more shines. And let me first remind you of my 12 marker system for wide receivers, which is just a series of 12 baselines or check boxes that I want my receivers to hit based on what previous successful NFL receivers did in college. And using this system, more comes in hitting on nine out of 12 markers which is currently tied for first, though I still expect Drake London to break away from this group at his pro day. But as for right now, it's tied for first in this class. He currently hits on age as he is currently 21 years old, 30% breakout age from his 2021 season, all of the yards per team pass attempt metrics, best market share of yards, and then mostly all of his combine metrics as well, which has really boosted his draft stock even more hitting on BMI, hitting on 40 time with a 44140 and speed score because of his size. The only markers that he's currently missing on are height as he is five foot 10, but that's okay. We don't necessarily need our receivers to be six foot. And then also 20% breakout age, which I mentioned before, he was so close to hitting on in both of his freshman and sophomore seasons that you could literally round to 20% if you wanted to, and he would hit that marker. But as for right now, we're just gonna say that he's at 19.9% and did not hit a 20% breakout age until last year. The biggest question mark for Moore right now is draft capital, because if he is a second round pick, he will hit on that marker and finish at 10 out of 12 markers hit, which I suspect will be second in this class 
unless David Bell is also a second round pick, in which case it would be tied for second. But that would be ahead of Traylon Burks, Garrett Wilson, Alave, Jameson Williams, basically everybody else in this class other than Drake London. But if he does fall to the third round, then they won't hit on that marker and he would be tied or just right above that other group of receivers that I just mentioned. So we'll see if the combine did enough to boost his draft value into assuredly being a round two pick. But regardless of his draft price, assuming that as long as he is a day two pick, at least as a second or third round pick, I think the other major concern with Moore's profile is that he's coming from a smaller school in Western Michigan and his competition level was not on par with all the other guys playing in the SEC, Big 10, or even the Pac-12. So let's talk this through because it's not like Western Michigan hasn't produced good NFL receivers in the past, most recently being Corey Davis. And then before that, it was Antonio Brown. And then before that, it was Greg Jennings. He put the team on his back. The MAC conference is also responsible for Kenny Galladay and Deontay Johnson. So I'm not overly concerned with the school that he is coming from or the conference that he's coming from and definitely not to the extent of some other players in this class. Moore is also one of the best prospects to come out of the MAC in a while. He's on par with Davis Galladay and Jennings. My leg broke. Under my markers, he's a better prospect than Antonio Brown and Deontay Johnson were in that regard with my markers. And as long as he gets the draft capital, which I think he should, he's going to be given opportunities to succeed in the NFL. And if you also look at some of his closest comps in terms of his measurables and production in college, Greg Jennings, again, just keeps appearing on this list. <sighs> but so does Odell Beckham Jr., who both of those players are ultra high ranges of outcomes for Sky Moore. And maybe on a more realistic projection, you get someone like Golden Tate, who is perhaps his closest comparison analytically. And I think that also kind of matches his play style, or at least how he would be utilized in the NFL, which would also be why I like him so much, because I really like Golden Tate, and I really like those kind of guys who are more PPR guys, which I think more will end up probably being guys like Hunter Renfro, Jarvis Landry on the Dolphins, Robert Woods. That's the kind of projection that I would place on more, which is super valuable for fantasy football. But there's also that little fact that Moore is a better athlete than those guys. He ran a four for one and his agility metrics were pretty solid. I mean, Woods, Landry, Renfro, those guys that I mentioned were mid four or five guys at best. So that lends to the idea that he can be more than a PPR slot guy because he has the athleticism to do more like Greg Jennings did. Touchdown! Like Odo Beckham Jr. did. Kind of also like what Elijah Moore started to do last year before his injury at a similar size to Sky Moore. And that is why Sky Moore is one of my favorite prospects in this class. But again, a good chunk of Moore's future value will depend on draft capital and grinding the mocks has him currently as a fringe second round pick. So let's talk about some landing spots in the NFL. And like we did with David Bell, we'll just stick with that mid to late second round range to kind of help manifest that draft capital a little bit. And also very similar to Bell, there are a ton of teams in that range that need receivers like Sky Moore. And the first is why I would say the Chicago Bears and the New Orleans Saints, both of whom literally only have one guy right now, Darnell Mooney and Michael Thomas, and they desperately need some weapons. And these teams would be very similar to me as Elijah Moore was last year, where he was the wide receiver two on the Jets with a veteran Corey Davis. But it wasn't all that hard to imagine the rookie becoming a 1B or even a 1A on the team as the season progressed. So I really like Chicago or New Orleans for Sky Moore in that similar type of opportunity where you could just continue to grow as the wide receiver two to the point where he might actually supersede and pass the wide receiver one already on the team. Then there's also the Chiefs right now sitting behind both of those teams with their Dolphins second round pick from the Tyree Kill trade. Obviously, they would be a great team for more to go to as again, obviously, so would the Packers at 53 or 59 overall in that late second round. You also have teams like Arizona to pair with DeAndre Hopkins, probably ahead of Rondell Moore, honestly. You also have Dallas to replace Amari Cooper. Buffalo as their wide receiver too, ahead of Gabriel Davis. You have Atlanta who needs literally anybody. And if a team really loves him in the early second, it could maybe even be Cleveland to replace Jarvis Landry and pair with Amari Cooper. And then like I highlighted with David Bell, if Moore does fall to the third round and he's not drafted by Chicago at the 3.07, which I also would really like, I really hope that it's Indianapolis at the 3.09 to pair with Michael Pittman. So if he goes to any of those teams in that 40 to 70 range, then I am all in on Sky Moore in the second round of rookie drafts or even the super late first in one quarterback leagues 
like I have him here for this video as my 111. So that is my breakdown of my wide receiver eight in this class, Sky Moore. Make sure that you hit that like button to let me know that you also love yourself some Sky Moore like I do. Let me know in the comments if you are targeting him in your rookie drafts and where you would like to do so, maybe what team you would prefer him to go to. And then be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed to get more content from the DLF YouTube channel as we continue on through rookie draft season with the NFL draft just a short few weeks away. So with that all being said, guys, thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch y'all later.